Welcome back to Briggs on Books. Are you about to pick your next read? Before you pick, you're going to want to hear about this book, Crown Hill. By the way, not only do I have the book, I actually have the author right here on Zoom with us, uh, Christina Apt. Welcome, Christina. Thanks, Mike Briggs. It's nice to be a guest on your show. Thank you for inviting me. Why is this book so significant all of a sudden? Crown Hill. Well, um, it's 10 years, 10 years ago yesterday that we launched the book and the American Legacy Book Awards are giving awards now for books that have been out for a length of time, acknowledging that people will read a book more than a year after it's been published. And so this year, Crown Hill uh, was given a American Legacy Book Award wow. finalist yeah. and that turned it into a Kindle top 10 seller. So we are mm -hmm. celebrating because good things don't always happen when you're an author and when they do, you need to go after them. So that's what we're doing. By, by the way, I'm always picking my next book. I read and read and read, and um, sometimes it really helps to see an award. I mean, somebody else noticed a book and said, this is a significant book. It really helps me pick the next book. Also, reviews help. Um, tell us about uh, uh, Crown Hill. So it was based on a house that I lived in for 20 years, and the story is basically that I tried to buy it in 1979 up in Eden, New York, a rural community about 30 miles outside of Buffalo. Um, didn't get it done. Uh, with, with, that was with my former husband. For the next 17 years, I became a house stalker. I would drive by it. I would park out in front of it. I was just drawn to this house. Wow. 17 years later, my husband and I are then divorcing and the house is back on the market. And it's been a commune for 17 years. So it's in a condition that no one else wants it but me. Wow. So I moved in and within two years, I got an anonymous letter in the mail, no return address, no postmark with a copy of a page from the history of Eden, the town that I live in, lines highlighted that tell a story about the house that I'm living in and something ter terribly tragic that happened to a woman that lived there that caused it to become known as the haunted house on the hill. Haunted house on the hill. Now, is some of this true? That's all true. All that true. is all true, every bit of it. So this so then is I not a novel, this is a real... This is this is historical fiction. Historical so I fiction. took all the history I got from there on. It was a cornucopia of stories that people yeah. brought me about this house and unusual spiritual things that had happened in it, leading to a prominent Buffalo lawyer who owned it as his summer home. He knew Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who was involved in spiritualism. He was at the house. They did seances, all kinds of stuff wow. that you could never imagine. How so, old is this house? How old is it? it? When I wrote it, it was 150 years. So it's 160 years old now. Yeah. And so I added a third part that was about a newly divorced woman starting again. And there's your fictional part, right? Yeah. So it's um, Crown Hill, a novel of love, life, and the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And it sells across America. And I think one of the reasons people love it is I made the house the narrator of the book. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's <laughs> clever. At the end of every chapter, the house comes in and advances the story. For I've you. got to read the book just to see how you did that. It was it was fun. I just because we're bringing it out in a new 10th edition, mm -hmm. um, I went back and read it first time in 10 years, really. Yeah. And um, let's just say I gently edited. <laughs> gently edited. Yeah. Because hopefully I'm a better writer than I was 10 years ago. And I believe I have. Who's going to read this book? Who do you think this will appeal to? My experience is it appeals to men and women alike. It doesn't matter. Um, they just, if they, if they're not into spiritualism, if they're not into the idea of homes having a personality, yeah. those kind of things, it won't appeal to them. But if you have any kind of belief in the spirit world, in the universe, in the greater powers, um, and it's also essentially this is a love story. Mm -hmm. It's a love story about a woman for her home. It's a love story about um, a town for the people that live in it, and it's about a love story between a man and a woman, and then in a family. So it, it's just got something for everyone, as long as you don't, as long as you're willing to suspend your disbelief. How's that? What's interesting is the age of the house out here in California. We don't have old buildings or old houses, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's unusual. So those houses can have a story and. Uh, lives of their own or multiple lives that they go, go through. By the way, I have another book here of yours, and now I can't see the title. It's blue. Beauty and Grace. Beauty and Grace. Tell us so a little Beauty bit about Grace that book. Beauty and Grace is another book that the American Legacy Awards uh, acknowledged this year as a finalist. And um, it's just flying around everywhere. Um, it's been a national bestseller. It's taken me um, I got to do off-Broadway readings with it. Uh, I also was invited to the International Dublin's Writers Festival because of it. Um, one of the most important things I believe that happened was there in South Dakota, there, in, there was a South Dakota women's prison book club. 
and they chose Beauty and Grace as their book club selection for September one year. And I got to go out and be in the prison and meet these women. Mm. And it was one of the most powerful experiences. Wow. The book is about people who were institutionalized in the early 1900s to the mid 1900s in the United States for really mm. not reliable reasons, mm -hmm. for terrible reasons. And then a lot of them fell between the cracks and were there for 40, 50 years, despite being of sound mind and body. Wow. So for a group of women to read this in a prison was a really moving experience for them and for me to hear them tell me their feelings about the book. Yeah. Did it take a lot of research to write that book? Lord, it went on forever. It was so, it started, the story, the basic story was given me to by a woman who was a supervisor of nurses for New York State. Mm -hmm. And she met nurses in what was an asylum at the time. And they had women who'd been there for 40, 50 years. Wow. And had just been locked away and they were still of sound body and mind and could never get out. Can't get out. And so then it just became a series of research, plays, other people coming and telling me their stories. And I will tell you this one thing, it doesn't matter where in the United States I take this book or in Ireland and who I talk to, everyone at my presentation, some person will come up and say, my aunt, my wow. uncle, my mother was institutionalized. And so I think this is a really important story, not only because of what it tells, but because it reflects what a lot of is going on in our country now when it comes to mental health and the way we yep. need to be better at helping people. Um, there's a couple more books. I'm just going to flash the covers. What I did is I went out to uh, uh, Amazon, okay. type Christina M. Apt, and all these books pop up. There's, I think, five all together. Five all together. And there'll be a sixth one. We'll probably leave Crown Hill, the original, up there, but we're coming out with a new one with a new cover. So there'll be six soon. Pretty soon six. That's great. Yeah. Now, I'm going to, I say this, I don't say it for every guest, but a lot of the guests is, I'm not going to go buy one copy of this book. I'm going to click like five times because I always have to go to a dinner party or something. I like to take a gift and I take books. I like to take books. So that's my I advice. love you. I <laughs> love you, Mike Briggs. Also, so, all year long, I'm always saying, oh, I should have got a gift for this or somebody's birthday. So I buy a stack of them and you'll have them. I want everybody to read what I'm reading so we could talk about it. So. But let me tell you one thing, Crown Hill is a huge favorite. I mean, 10 years yeah. is a long time for a book to be out, especially my hometown. You know, people bought it when it first came out. Last year at Halloween, we did two presentations. They sold out. Mm -hmm. People love it at Halloween yeah. time. It's just that kind of a book. It's like for Valentine's, you would read a love story. Well, this is kind of a love Halloween story. Yeah. Uh, Christina, do you have a prediction for the Super Bowl this year? Oh, well, of course. I mean... In my estimation, it will finally be revenge for the Buffalo Bills and that we will win, not just attend, yeah. but we will have our moment in the sun and that we will win and we'll wave to the Kansas City Chiefs as they slump off the field as the losers. Yeah, just uh, Josh Allen is from here near Fresno, so he's yours he now and you say he's a great citizen. He is a, a remarkable player, but just an outstanding human being and he does such good things in our community. We're very That's lucky great. to have him. Uh, Christina, here's the cover of her book, Crown Hill. Won a major recognition recently. Uh, you should get it. Any last thoughts about your books or anything in the world, Christina? Um, I will tell you that the feedback I get more often than not from friends, family, and total strangers is that when they read the book, they feel as if they are actually part of it because my characters feel very yeah. real to them. And that's one of the greatest gifts you can get. And also that they read it more than once. I'm thrilled. That is great, yeah, when they read your book more than once, that's great. Uh, I know yeah. we're past time, they're giving me the signal, but tell us what's at your website, christinaapp.com, christinaapp.com. Right. right, there's an A at the end of Christina, and A at the beginning of Apt, and please go anytime, we've got information, and if you want to, for the Crown Hill launch, we're doing a live stream, so yeah. buy the book and get the live stream, and you'll see the whole deal that night That'd on the of October. Let me say the uh, web address more correctly, it's christinaapp.com. Yes, sir. That's easy. All right. Thank you, Christina. I'm inspired by you, and uh, I want you to come back again and again. Mike Briggs, I'm happy to come back again and again. You just call me or send me a text, and I'll be there. All right. Uh, for our viewers, don't go anywhere. We have one more author coming up right after this. Bye, everybody.